Hello guys, welcome back to TechDose and in this video we will see how to find the kth smallest element in a BST which is from lead code day 20 of the May challenge. So let us now look at the problem statement. Let us assume that we are given a binary search tree and in here we want to find the kth smallest element within this binary search tree. So let us assume that we are given this binary search tree and we are required to find the third smallest element. Then this will clearly be this 4 and the fourth smallest element will be this 5. So how do we find this kth smallest element in a BST efficiently? Now the first thing which we should look at is the BST property. So let us assume that this is our BST. Now what property does a BST holds? All the left subtree elements from the root are less than this root and all the right subtree elements are greater than the root. And if you have duplicate elements, then you can say that all the left subtree elements are less than equals to root or you can assume that all the right subtree elements are greater than equals to root. You need to take one of these. So generally people take all the left subtree elements are less than equals to root. So this is true for each and every node. So let us say we start from this root. So if you are checking for this node 5 whether this is following the BST property or not then all the nodes in the left subtree should be less than this 5 and all the nodes in the right subtree should be greater than this 5 and this should hold true for all the nodes recursively. So we will again check for this node 3 and we will see if all the nodes on the left subtree are less than this 3 and all the nodes on the right subtree are greater than this 3. Okay. And if the right subtree elements are greater than 3 then it should be in the range of 5 to 3. It should not exceed this value 5 otherwise it will not follow the BST property. So I hope you got the BST property. Now how do we find the kth smallest element in the BST efficiently? So let us look at the first method. I will explain you three methods. So the first method says that let us assume we are given a BST. Now what we will do is we will just find the in order traversal. So I hope you already know how to find in order traversal. If you find in order for a BST then all the elements will be arranged in ascending order. Now you can simply find k-1th index element and return it as the kth smallest element. So in this case k is equals to 5. So we will return the fourth index element which is equals to 6. This will be our fifth smallest element in this BST. So the total time complexity for this will be order of n for forming this array and then in just O1 time after forming this array we can return the kth smallest element and the space complexity is also n because you need an extra array in order to store the in order traversal that is the elements in ascending order. So this is one very simple approach. Let us now look at the next approach. So the next approach is by using recursion. Actually this can also be done by using stack but actually recursion also implements stack. Therefore either you do by recursion or stack it will have the same time complexity. So in this case we will be doing by recursion. So let us say this is our root 5 and this is our given BST. And now we want to find the fifth smallest element within this BST. So how do we find it? Well in my code I have implemented this second method. So what I will do is I will just do the in order traversal that is we will do in order processing. First we will travel to the left subtree then we will process and then again travel to the right subtree. So first we travel to the left subtree from 5 we reach 3 from 3 we reach 2 and from 2 we make the left call. So there is no left child of this 2 so this will return 0. Now we will process this. Now we will check if k minus 1 is equals to 0. So you can see that k is actually 5 and if you decrement its value it will become 4. So this is not equals to 0. If it will be equals to 0 then we will simply return this node value. But this is not equals to 0. So we won't return the value. Now we will make a right call. So the right child is not present it will also return 0. Now since the right is also 0 we will simply return 0. Now this left call received a value 0. Now we will do the processing that is we will decrement the k value by 1. So k value will now be equals to 3. So is 3 equals to 0? No this is not equals to 0. So this is not the element we want. We will make the right call. This is 4. From 4 we will make the left call. This is not present it will return 0. And now we will process the element. So we will actually decrement this value by 1. So this will be equals to 2. Is 2 equals to 0? No this is not equals to 0. Therefore this is not our required element. We will make the right call. This will return 0. Now since it got 0 from both ends it will also return 0. 
now this 3 has also been processed so it will return to this 5 so now we are at 5 and you can see that k was actually 5 and it decremented and it got equals to 2 saying that we actually processed 3 nodes so you can see that in the left subtree we processed 3 nodes now we return from the left call to this root node 5 now the next step is to process this node so we will decrement the value of k it will now be equals to 1 is 1 equals to 0 no this is not equals to 0 therefore this is not our required element we will make the right call so we are at 7 we will make the left call we are at 6 we will make the left call this will return 0 since it is not present now we will process this element we will just decrement the k value it will be equals to 0 now since this is equals to 0 therefore this is our required kth smallest element so whenever we find the kth smallest element we will simply return without making any further calls so i will return the value this will be equals to 6 and since this 7 got a non-zero value from the left call therefore it will not make any further calls because since it got a non-zero value this indicates that it has found the value therefore it will simply return the value itself which is 6 and since this 5 received a non-zero value from the right call it will simply return that value saying that it has found the kth smallest element so in this case our answer returned will be equals to 6 now you might be wondering that this 0 might not work if the range of values starts from 0 and goes to the value n or if it starts from some value minus n and goes to some value n so for these type of ranges you can basically take int min that will always work ok so this process is actually taking order of n time complexity because if the elements are given in ascending order or the elements are given in descending order then this BST will actually be a skewed tree and to find the kth smallest element in a skewed tree you will have to traverse all the elements so the time complexity will be O n now the space complexity is order of height because the stack will be of the size of the maximum depth of this tree therefore in this case since it can be a skewed tree therefore the space will also be of the order of n now is there any way to improve the time complexity of searching the kth smallest element in a BST? Yes, there is a way. So let us look at the third method. So in this third method what we will do is, we will just store an extra integer variable for each and every node. So this question does not allow to change the value of the node. If you are allowed to change the value of the node or add an extra parameter, then you can simply take an integer for each and every node and what will this integer store this will only store how many elements are present to the left subtree of this current node so you can see that for this 5 i have given l equals to 3 saying that in the left subtree there are three nodes and similarly you can see that for node 3 i have given l equals to 1 saying that in the left subtree you have just one node so how will storing this information improve our time complexity? So let us say you want to find k equals to fifth smallest element. So how do you find it? Actually we will start from the root node and then we will see if the kth smallest element is lying to the left subtree of this current element. So the left subtree is having just three nodes. Therefore all the elements which are less than the current node are actually in the left subtree and there are only three such nodes. But you want to find the fifth smallest element. So there will be no node which will be fifth smallest in this left subtree. So you will skip all these elements altogether and then you will decrement its value by 3. So it will be equals to 2. Now if k becomes equals to 0 then the current node is our kth smallest element. So in this case this is not equals to 0. So we will have to make a right call. And before making the right call we are actually skipping this element therefore we will decrement the k value by 1 and this will now be equals to 1 so we are at this 7 now we see that on the left hand side of 7 there is just one element so is our kth smallest element lying to the left subtree you can see that k's value is equals to 1 and we are having one node on the left hand side so obviously the kth smallest element will be present on the left subtree so we will make a call to the left subtree now we are at this 6 and you can see that L is equals to 0 saying that there is no element to the left hand side. Now we will process this current element. So for processing this current element we will decrement the k's value by 1 and now it becomes equals to 0. So whenever k is equals to 0 that means the current element is our kth smallest element. And whenever we find our kth smallest element we will simply return the value. 
So this seven gets a non-zero value, which is equals to six. Now, whenever it gets a non-zero value, this will also return without making any further calls. So this will return a value six and root will also return six. So in this case, you see that we just made two calls from five to seven and from seven to six. So this took only order of height time. Okay. So this process is having the lowest time complexity, which is equals to order of height. So if this is a skewed tree, then this will be equals to order of n because for a skewed tree, height is equals to the number of nodes. So I hope you understood the explanation. Now let us look at the code for the second approach because we could not apply the third approach for this problem since we cannot modify the nodes. So in this case, we are given a root and the k value saying the k smallest element needs to be found. So I will just call this solve and I will pass the root and k and I will return whatever is returned from this solve function. Now this solve is actually taking the root and is taking the k smallest element that is value of k by reference because whatever changes are made in a recursion call we want to remember it. Therefore I will receive it by reference and not by value. So if there is no root that means the node is not present then we will simply return zero as I explained in method two. Now first I will make the left call that is we are basically doing in order traversal processing. So first we will make left calls and then after returning from the left call I will check if the left call returned a non-zero value. If it returned a non-zero value that means we have found our k smallest element on the left hand side and so we don't need to do further processing. We will just return whatever value was returned from the left subtree. Otherwise if the left subtree just returned a zero value then we will have to do the further processing. So we will process this current node. So how do we process this current node? We actually decrement the value. That is we decrement the value of k by 1. And now we will check after decrementing by one value if k is equals to 0. If it is equals to 0 then the current element is our k smallest element and we will simply return the current roots value. Otherwise if this is not our required element then we will make a right call. So whatever is returned from the right call will be stored in this right variable and whatever is stored in this right variable will be returned because if the element is not found in our right subtree then this right subtree will be returning 0. So we will return 0 if the element is not found. Otherwise if the element is found then this will return a non-zero value and we will have to return this non-zero value. So whatever is returned from the right subtree we will have to basically return it. So this recursive process will actually be finding the kth smallest element in order of n time and order of n space. So this is the second method and I hope you enjoyed the solution and I hope you enjoyed the solution. If you have any other approach or solution in different languages then please post below so that everyone can take benefit from it. Like and share our video and subscribe to our channel in order to watch more of this programming video. See you now next video. Thank you.